and we'll go across the street talk to John Kruk. We'll hear all the interviews. We just heard Christian Pache said, yeah, my first walk up in my career and the first of many. But I got to say, if you're a Phillies fan, you're watching. This is a 4-12 and Colorado team. Should it have come down to this? Win's the win. I get it, Ricky. Yeah. But they're giving up the better part of seven runs per game. Yeah, the Phillies pitching staff, that's what's holding this team uh, together right now. Obviously, yes, they are one game over 500 now. They, they, these are teams that other teams have beaten up on. So why aren't the Phillies? What is going on offensively? Uh, you could look at this in two different ways. It doesn't matter. They came out on top. That's one way to look at this. But five measly hits. I mean, that, that's, or, or excuse me, six measly hits. That's, that's a little confusing to me. What is going on with this offense? Why, why, isn't, why, are, why aren't they carrying the load? Because I, I look at it like this. I look at this Phillies team as they should be dominant offensively. Mm -hmm. Aaron Nola was dominant pitching. Sure tonight. was. He took he took over a ball game himself. I mean, if he wasn't dominant tonight, then what? Then the Phillies are looking up at another loss. This offense has got to get clicking at some point. They were one for six with runners in scoring position until Pache got that big hit there in the in the tenth inning. But that's the bottom line, Ricky. There is a bottom line. It Ghost is. Runner is the best player for the Phillies the Phillies had tonight. I love it. Uh, let's talk about the best broadcaster right now. Let's go across the street, Ricky Bo. Check in with Mr. John Cruck, who predicted that walk-off hit. It, it worked, <laughs> I'll tell you what, worked like a charm, John. It really did. And then the next thing you know, Tommy's actually calling it. But it must have been exciting. Christian Pache, the first of many walk-off hits, he says. Yeah, that's what he said, and I hope I hope it's true, and I hope they're all with the Phillies, because uh, Lord knows we can we can use them. But yeah, I, I, the offense is is uh, frustrating. But you know they made some plays defensively. They were a little cleaner today defensively, um, and the pitching was from top to bottom was outstanding. And look, I I, I know this team. The the Rockies aren't very good. Record-wise, their pitching staff, their starting staff especially hasn't been good. They got a lot of guys hurt. Uh, but I will tell you this, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, like, you know, trying to make an excuse for the Phillies' offense, but Quantrill threw the ball pretty well. And, uh, you know, we knew their bullpen was pretty good. Uh, they do walk some guys, but, uh, you know, I, this offense, the Phillies' offense does have to get clicking here at some point. But, I mean, a win's a win. Two to one, ten to one, it don't matter. You know, they're they're going to wake up tomorrow with the win in the column. John, I'm, I'm going to give you a number, which is really impressive to me. For Six. Aaron Nola tonight. No, Aaron Nola, Aaron Nola <laughs> tonight had 18 swings on his curveball. 12 swings and misses. How dominant was that? You know, he he threw it for strikes when he needed it, but and then he when he was ahead in the county, he was able to throw it for balls and. Uh, you know, these, these Rockies, they're, they have some younger players. They're going to be aggressive. You know that. that That's just part of the nature of being a young player. Not many young players come up, and they're really, really, really selective hitters. Uh, so you could take advantage of that. And I think Aaron and JT were really worked well together tonight. And, you know, when Aaron, you know, and his velocity was back up to where you kind of, uh, you know, wanted to see it. But when he has that breaking ball working, man, it's it's uh, when he can throw it for strikes and then throw it for balls when he has to, uh, he's going to be tough to hit for any team. John, as you said, a win's a win. That's the bottom line. The record's now nine wins, eight losses. But here's the thing. They've won two out of three. They've won four out of six. And I said to you and Tommy and John Crock yesterday, uh, Mike Schmidt yesterday, before the game, that it just feels like they're going to break out and go on a, a nice win streak. I still sense that. I, I just don't know what's taking them so long. Well, you know, I, look, they, they play the Rockies. We know that uh, the Rockies are struggling this year, and the White Sox are struggling uh, also. So they got the next five games are against those two teams uh, with a day off, of course, on Thursday. But, uh, you know, look, if they're going to string together four or five in a row, you know, this could be the time to do it. But, yeah, you know, look, six hits in ten innings, that, that's probably not going to do it unless they hit – Five, five of those six are homers, uh, but and and I look, I I know the offense is it's been frustrating this year watching, 
But I firmly believe that this team, this offense, at, at some point is just going to take off and just start annihilating people. And, you know, let's hope that starts tomorrow. John, Johan Rojas 0 for 3 tonight. But did you see some good signs in his at-bats? He hit the ball hard twice, uh, two out of the three times. Yeah, he did. And and what I noticed today, Rick, and I don't know if uh, he he was working on this today. I, I would assume he was. But uh, he, he went to – with two strikes especially he went to a, a just basically lift his toe up and his front toe up and put it down and uh it looked like he 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 time pitches better that way and it looked and it looked honestly looked like his swing was more flat than it was that kind of loopy swing he gets sometimes and i i just think if he can do this and and figure out a way to just hit the ball on the ground you know, in between first and second, in between short and third, he's going to get a ton of hits because of his speed. And, and again, every once in a while, I lay down a bunt. But I like that approach today. Uh, you know, the, the no stride, basically, just lift the foot up, put it right back down. And, uh, you know, I, I just I just hope that, you know, I, I, I hope in heck that it works for him and he gets confident. The thing about the, the last at bat I think he had, he hit that fly ball. Uh, that was caught like at the wall and left. And I hope he doesn't get frustrated and think, well, I can't hit for power this way, so I want to go back to my other way. You know, he gets on base and steals base in front of Kyle and Trey and, and, and Bryce. He's going to score a ton of runs from that ninth hole. Speaking of Bryce, he's up to 197 from 190. This by far is his worst start as a Philly. He's 31 years of age. Uh, <laughs> we, we figure he's going to come around. It's not going to be a problem. But we see how frustrated he is, John. And uh, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on his start through 15 games he has played. Well, it hasn't been good, and you know it's it's his worst start in his career, isn't it? Is that what you just said, Michael? I yeah, mean, no, no, worst start. I wouldn't be as surprised a as a Philly, right? All right, yeah, I, uh, you know, again, I, you know, he has hit some balls hard. Yes, it's frustrating. I don't care how accomplished you are that you you start hitting balls hard early in the season and they get caught. It gets frustrating because, you know, you look at that board and you see 190 or whatever. I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's if it's April or September. Uh, you know, it chaps you a little bit when you see those numbers. And uh, and you know, the great thing is is that it is still relatively early in the season, and he can still make up the ground and put up the numbers that we're used to seeing from Bryce Harper. And I don't, I, I like I said, I don't worry about him. I I I worry about others. I don't worry about him. He'll he needs, figure it out. He needs a stop day. You hit the you hit the ball soft and you pick up two hits. Yeah, yeah. Man, Bryson started at two hits that I think exit velocity exit velocity <laughs> added up was about 22 miles an hour. <laughs> but he got two knocks in the books, man, and he scored the winning run because he made the last out there in the ninth inning. Mm -hmm. He's a hey, ghost runner extraordinaire. He knew what he he knew he knew what he was doing. He, he knew you know make that last out so he can run because he got speed. All right, John. Thanks give, so much. Hey, give Whit Merrifield credit too for laying down a bunt. We don't see that often enough. We we're going to show that in just one moment. You want to stay oh. with us? I mean, you probably no, I'm do. Good. I got to go home. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Okay, John Crock. <laughs> we didn't even. He's get already to, leaving. Didn't even get to thank him. Especially like what happened in a game like this, where the Rockies don't score, and then you have an opportunity. You get that bunt down, makes it a lot easier to score that runner from third. Pache had pinch run for Kyle Schwarber. I'm assuming that you think that that's a, a solid move. You needed, eighth inning, bottom yeah, of the eighth. You needed, the needed that run, yeah. I mean, although Schwarber's been moving fairly well this yeah, year, right? but, so I mean, I'm kind of torn with that. You are taking him out of the game if the game if you do not score all of a sudden it's zero zero. But he might, he may have been thinking, well, you know what, this might be our only chance right here. Yeah, you know Topper's going to be excited about this win. I don't know how he we're really gonna, is. I, I know I don't know how we're going to tell, but let's really let's see is. if we can. Here's Rob Thompson post game in the clubhouse. A lot happened in the end, but I guess start with Noah. You've seen him pitch a lot. Like, have you, is that as good as you've seen the curveball? Yeah, probably. I mean, it doesn't. I've seen his curveball really good, but it, it was as good as it gets tonight. And it wasn't just the curveball; it was. You know, the velocity came back up, which was good to see. Um, the command was excellent. He just, he pitched really well. 
No, not really. And we had um, uh, we had Alvy ready for for Blackman, and his pitch count was in pretty good shape. And he's he was pitching well. Is your reaction to the Jeff Hoffman play? Did you think he had him at first? Um, I wasn't sure because it you know it was a pile of dust. So uh, I'm I'm happy he was out, but I wasn't quite sure, and I want to make sure that Hoffy was okay. No, no. He, so this happens to him every once in a while. It's from the seam of the baseball when he throws it. He gets a cut on the top of his thumb. Um, he should be fine. They just clean it up. And so Rajay ends up getting the game when he hit, but you, you didn't. You pinch ran for Schwarber, Schwarber. Not until there was one out. Why, yeah. why didn't you go out there right away? Well, it was in in the middle of an at bat. And once you get to one out, there's a little more urgency to score. You know, nobody out, he gets a base hit, and we have to hold, then we still have three outs to work with. So once we get to one out, then it's time to go. You sacrifice with there knowing that they could put Beaumont on. Yeah. Okay yeah. Because you still have two shots, really, because they're going to play the infield in. They're not going to throw through, so we can just run to second base. So they're not going to turn double play, so at least we get Turner to the plate. Here, how nice was it to see him come it was on? great. Really was. Yeah. Yeah. Option quarterback. All state. Did, did Robles get hurt after the game in the celebration? Not that I know of. Possibly. You know, because I, I don't know. He's a tough guy, but I don't. I'm. I'm not sure how it affects him, but it could. How do you look at? I mean, you, you get only scored two runs again tonight, mm -hmm. and you're over 500 now. I mean, how do you kind of compartmentalize both things? Like you're winning games, but you're not. You're also yeah, I mean, we're find, finding ways to win. You know, we're getting great pitching. Uh, hopefully, that keeps going. Um, and then once our offense gets going, then we're going to be just fine. But right now we're grinding and we're finding ways to win. So that's that's a good sign. Did, did Noah's velocity, was it where you expected it to be or did it even surprise you as much as it jumped from this first year? No, 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 it was kind of expected. Yeah, that's usually where he's at this time of year. Does it worry you at all how frustrated Bryce seems to be right now? Well, when Bryce isn't hitting, he's always frustrated. So eventually he comes out of it. Bryce and a bunch of guys tonight had good hard contact, but it felt like the balls were just dying on the warning track or shortly before it. You know, it wasn't cold. There was no wind. What, what do you make? What do you make of that? Um, I'm not sure what to make of it, but we did hit some balls hard, and that's that's all I I look at. You know, the fact that they didn't go out of the ballpark. I, you know, I don't know what that is, but um, but we did hit some balls hard. Stott's having good at bats. He really is. And Trey looks like he's coming around. Which is nice, and you know we just got to get a couple other guys going. Um, all of his swings and misses were on one pitch tonight. Yeah, that to me is saying look, something. Look at the bottom line: thirteen and one third innings pitched, three earned runs, twelve strikeouts in his last two starts, and he comes in tonight with an ERA of four point five zero and lowers it more than one run. He's to, back. He's it would seem lowers it to three point four seven. So, the starting rotation has been nothing but outstanding for this Phillies team right now. The entire staff. I, I, know, I know you're all, you're what 17 games in right now, but wh where would they be if they had a so-so staff? I mean, they would not be in good shape w w at all. Uh, this offense has not gotten going. The, the pitching has carried this team. They'd be the Rockies, uh, which they beat by one run, but that's a whole other story. We'll get to that later. Here's Aaron Nola in the clubhouse. I, uh, before I went out, I saw on TV had a tarp on. I'm like, yeah, I didn't see some rain coming <laughs> today. But uh, it was a great, weather was great. Um, felt awesome out there and uh, felt good. What do you think made the curveball so good tonight? Um, just kind of feel like I started with more conviction tonight, and uh, I feel like there wasn't much pop on it. I feel so. I feel like it was pretty sharp. And uh, I was getting some good swing, some swing and misses on it and uh, locating it. Was tonight the first night you felt like you could really let it loose uh, in the past because either the cold, the wind, the rain? Uh, really, I feel like I could let it loose a little bit in D.C., but 
Um, tonight, obviously, felt a little bit better. Um, got a little sweat going on, which was nice, and uh, yeah, probably felt better tonight than I have previous starts. But yeah. Did any part of you wonder if the velocity was going to get back to that level, or based on, you know, based on the irregular how, how weird last week was in St. Louis? Or? Well, I mean, I'm throwing in rain uh, and kind of a muddy mound, so there's really no point for me to try to throw hard then because um, obviously the command really wasn't there. I didn't really want to slip and you know, whatnot. I mean, I didn't feel like you know, my velocity was going to be that down today as it was in St. Louis, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, you know, for me, velocity is velocity, and if it comes, you know, next outing or or throughout the, the rest of the year, that's fine, but uh, if I could just locate my four seam and two seam and uh, throw my other pitches for quality strikes and uh, keep them off balance, head and subtract, and go deep in the game, that's all that matters to me. What do you see yourself right now in terms of the start of the season through spring training and then the start where you see yourself right now or where you want to be in terms of where you want, in terms of where you want to be? I mean, I want to keep keep throwing a lot. I want to keep uh, getting early outs in and getting ahead of guys and stay with my goals and go deep in the game to save, save the bullpen and uh, throw as many innings as I can and uh, give the guys the best chance to win. And, um, you know, that's what... That's what all the, our starters want to do. We want to put the guys in the best position to win the game. And, um, you know, like tonight, the bullpen came in after me and, and shut the door. And, um, you know, Patrick got the big hit, so it was a great win. What do you, I mean, you guys are over 500, but you have not scored a lot of runs. Like, what do you kind of make of how the first three weeks have gone this week? Grinding. Yeah, we're competing uh, for sure. I mean, yeah, we had not scored many runs. I mean, that's going to come for sure. I mean, I bet. Our uh, our team's too good. To, you know, we've seen what we what we can do or what our lineup can do. So that's not gonna. Um, I don't think anybody's gonna hang their head on that. I mean, uh, got a lot of baseball left, and um, all we can do, uh, you know, for a pitcher standpoint, is keep the game as close as possible and give those guys the best chance. And uh, I feel like we have. For the most part, is there any mentality where the pitchers are kind of like, oh, like these guys are clearly just going through a little bit of a slump, but like it's on us to like pick it up just a little bit, and maybe they'll pay us back later. I don't know. Is that is that, <laughs> is that stupid or? Uh, I mean, as pitchers, we don't really think about that kind of stuff. We want to go out and do our part, no matter what the situation is. We want to get get the guy out, no matter how we get him out. Um, the quality out there, uh, no matter what the situation is, because as pitchers, we can't really uh, control with the. Uh, the offense does. The offense can't control what the pitchers do. Um, so each guy's got to do their part, and uh, that's what we're all focused on. And uh, you get yourself a couple innings plus. Hey, you take that every time. Mm -hmm. No earned runs, right? Yeah. But it's all about. No, not at all. And you heard what Aaron Nola said. I just want to continue to pitch, save the bullpen as much as possible, and give our team a chance to win. Aaron was efficient though. I mean if you look at the numbers that he was throwing up there he was what 80 after seven innings like 85 pitches whatever it was. I, I mean th this is a guy that that went out there on a mission tonight. He was throwing strikes. He was moving the ball around. He wasn't staying in any patterns pitch wise and then he had a curveball that was just absolutely vicious. Yeah that together that's a pretty good outing one bad pitch when you really look at it. Yeah. We've got Jeff Hoffman coming up in just a few moments. You'll want to hear what he has to say about his finger, about blocking the plate, about saving that run from scoring, because that very well is the ball game right there. Here's Jeff Hoffman, post game, clubhouse. Uh, no, not, not in high school. Before high school, I played, but I wish baseball was more of a contact sport. <laughs> we got it. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, uh, that was a crazy play for two pitchers to be involved in. Uh, yeah, um, I already talked to Kyle. He's he's all right, so that's good to know. And um, yeah, just crazy play. Can you yeah, kind of take us through it? Um, you know, what are you thinking, kind of, as you're charging there to block the plate? Um, yeah, uh, just honestly, just get there in time because I knew JT was gonna, you know, have a have a chance to flip it to me. Um, and JT kind of he kind of threw it in a perfect spot for me. I just tried to slap the tag on him as quick as I could. Just. We both got there like the same time. I mean, everybody seen the replay, but um, yeah, it was crazy. Can you tell out of hand it was going to be a, a problem for JT that pitch? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty. I mean, I don't even know. It might have bounced in the grass. There was I was dealing with a little bit of a cut on my hand. Uh, okay. But um, I think as soon as I saw the trajectory of it out of my hand, I knew that he was. It was going to be a heck of a play for him to even not get like any body on it at all. But once I saw him get some body on it, I knew there was going to be a close play. Did you come out of that play healthy? I mean, did, did in the play of the play? Did anything happen to you? Um, I mean, I got like nicked a little bit on my ankle, um, but now not on the play. It was pretty pretty clean.